Zechariah chapter 12. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel. Saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth. Ever wonder what that foundation is like? It's spoken of. We know that inside the earth there's hell. There's a vacant place that used to be Abraham's bosom. And form the spirit of man within him. That's Genesis chapter 2. So Zechariah is expressing the creator part of God. It's taken for granted that God created. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about. Now he, this is not <clears throat> saying Jerusalem's going to be trembling. This is the people of, about Jerusalem will be trembling. When they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. So there will be people against Jerusalem that God will be against them. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all the people. There will be a time when Jerusalem, the nation, the, the city that has been fought over, will be a hassle, will be a stumbling block, will be for the worst to the Gentile people. And it will be for God. All the burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces this is like that 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 stone that's cut out of the mountain and daniel interprets the image of nebuchadnezzar that destroys that image that nebuchadnezzar dreams of jerusalem will be the world conqueror of all the world that one little city by the power of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, it will be victorious. Though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Armageddon. We've already seen the League of Nations, the United Nations coming against the Jews. And we see God coming to defend and to fight and to get victory. In that day, very important statement, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment. The horse. The horse is going to go crazy, weird, wondering. And his rider with madness, craziness, loony, no sense. I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah. God is going to see the Jews. Looking as if God has closed his eyes upon Judah. You can't open your eyes if they're already open. You can only open your eyes if they are closed. Seven years. And I will smite every horse of the people with blindness. How's that? What kind of troops are you going to have in the future when their horses will be blinded in astonishment and the riders going crazy? And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, not verbally, in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. Standing up for God as a nation. In that day, 
Will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood, a, a burning place, a furnace, and like a torch of fire in a sheath? That's where you put the sword. That's where you carry, uh, what do you call it, the, the grains that you picked in a sheath. It can go on in flames. They shall devour all the people round about Judah. Now you wouldn't think that today. But you know how many battles Israel has been in. And as a little nation they've kicked butt. They just haven't kicked everybody's butt yet. They've only kicked enough butt to still have enemies. One day God's going to stand on their side. And they're going to kick all the butts. They should devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left hand. Everywhere. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place. Even in Jerusalem. That city that today is Jerusalem is not really Jerusalem. God's not there. The Jerusalem of the Bible, the Jerusalem of God will be there one day. No Arabs, no Catholics, no Islam, no infidels, no lost, no Gentiles. Only Gentiles will be chasing after Jesus Christ for the glory of Jesus Christ. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Temporary dwellings. You move about, you go about, no nomads. It's not a permanent dwelling. That the glory of the house of David, the kings, the children of David, and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. There's going to be no prize. going to be no lifting up. There's going to be no haughtiness. They'll be low and humble in that day. Shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem? Now, if the Lord's going to defend you, who's going to win? We got a guy who tells us right now, you know, that the World War II was the Antichrist and all that. And all the wars that Israel's been in since, if God is defending them, that's a losing God. Because we're looking at Zechariah chapter 12 that Israel is going to fight with God's help and they're going to conquer. And they're going to conquer all. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, a mighty man. The weakling is going to be as strong as David. Do you know when David fought to Goliath? The entire nation, including their king, was a weakling. Goliath would come out, and they all hide. Oh, shoo. Oh, shoo they. Now they're going to stand up like David. And the house of David shall be as God. You read the accounts of David and his family and all what they've done they were anything like God Solomon picked himself a thousand wives and went serving after other gods Rehoboam broke the nation in half I can go on and on and on one day Israel will be in Jesus Christ for purity for God as the angel of the Lord before them strength that angel of the Lord, man, he was vicious. He was powerful. He was mighty. He destroyed an entire army in just one night. He had David shaking his boots when he was at the uh, threshing floor. And it shall come to pass in that day. Look at how that keeps coming over and over and over. There is coming a day that Israel will be in victory 
And you know what's so wonderful about that day? I am going to be literally behind Jesus Christ watching it all. I will see Israel in the love of God in victory and pronounce the nation above all nations. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek, this is God will seek, to destroy all the nations. Now here we go. Now watch. This is the judgment of the goats and the sheep. Here's the condition. All nations that come against Jerusalem. The armies that the Antichrist gets to come after the Jews, they will be wiped out. The nations that help the Jews are not going to stand here and try to fight them. They've been defending them. They're going to stand back. Something's going to hold them to, hey, we're not getting involved in this. So they will not get destroyed. So the judgment of, of the nations that reject Jesus, Jesus Christ and the Jews, that hamper the Jews, they're going to destroy their own selves by gathering themselves together to make it easier. The United Nations in New York, setting all the people and all the nations together, is making it easier for Jesus Christ. Don't you realize that? God doesn't have the bad eye. They're going to come all together themselves and be more happy to, to try to get rid of their Jews. I will pour upon the house of David Jewish and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem David and the, the inhabitants of Jerusalem that wouldn't be the Roman Catholics the Ishmaelites and all that all those that are of David Jewish there are two things found of Jews, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes, and of David. That is the throne. That is the kingdom. That is Jesus Christ. And upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me. Now watch this. If Jesus Christ is not God. Whom they have pierced. If your Bible doesn't have John 19.37 write it. Are you telling me Mr. Jehovah Witness that you can pierce God and not Jesus Christ? God said that is when he was dead and a soldier came over and pierced his side and I forget water or blood I forget which one was first because it's very important the prophecy of Jesus Christ after he was dead that the spear in his side is found in Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 He's dead. You know what the Bible says? They shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Not only did that Roman soldier pierce his side, there were Jews watching it. Remember what Jesus told Thomas in the upper room? Reaching that. It's still there. The scar. And they, the Jews, shall mourn for him, Jesus, God, as one mourneth for his only son. Why would that be put in there? Why did he say one mourneth for his son? Because God is showing you Jesus Christ. And shall be in bitterness for him. Ready? As one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Matthew 1.25 
Isaiah 17, 7, Revelation 1, 7. So again, we see another prophecy fulfilled. And there are rabbis out there who are not saved that will say to you that these prophecies do point to that man named Jesus. They just don't have the understanding to believe it. 48 prophecies. And they're all fulfilled. But look at this one again. The spirit grace and supplicates. They shall look upon me. Whom they had pierced. This is also the Lord Jesus Christ. When he comes back. Those Jews are going to see him. They're going to see Jesus, the King of Kings, David. The Lord of Lords. Who killed the Jesus? The Jews did. Peter said he did. I believe Paul said the Jews were accountable. A Roman soldier pierced the side of Jesus. And Jesus, God says, they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, of David. I'm looking for the verse real quick. Uh, verse 5, and the governors of Judah shall say in their heart. Matthew 5, 28. You don't have to be in action to be put with a crime. Jezebel had a man killed and her husband was charged with a murder also. Joab does a killing and his brother is charged for the murder also. All you got to do is think it. Those Jews thought of killing Jesus Christ. And now they're charged. Bitterness. You know how Madeline's going to be when those Jews see Jesus Christ? And how happy they're going to be to see Jesus Christ. How wonderful they're going to be when they see Jesus Christ. How sorry they're going to be when they see Jesus. In that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem. Again. Here he is. And look what we've done to him. I don't know if they're still there. If someone went over to sell a picture and put a whole bunch of Bibles in those caves. Thinking when the Jews go there, the word will be there. As the morning of Hadarimim in the valley of Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every family apart. The family in the house of David apart, Jewish, and their wives apart. The family of the house of Nathan apart. Their wives apart. A great morning of sorrow. This is the one they rejected. The family in the house of Levi apart, the priests. Their wives apart. The family of Shimei apart, and their wives apart. All the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. This is an utter repentance of the nation of Israel. And they're just literally crying out to Jesus Christ. In sorrow. Because here he is. That's going to be a day. And we're going to see that day. And we're going to glorify in that day. And we're going to rejoice with the Jews in that day. 